Buenas, buenas. Welcome to Music Marketing TV. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to arrange your song in FL Studio 20. So first of all, we're going to be looking at the playlist primarily, and we're going to be looking at how it uh, works with clips, how its editors work, and what you can do with these clips, such as rendering and replacing, automation clips, uh, briefly. And we're also going to be looking at how to make new playlists Yes, we can make mo more playlists so you can have multiple versions of that same song inside one FL Studio project. And we're also going to be adding markers to a project so we can change the arrangement, test different arrangements of a song out. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to play you guys the track that I have right here, which is a melodic techno track. Kind of poking fun at melodic techno, but let's play back. Let's I'm gonna select my draw tool. So I'm gonna press control, right click and drag to select all these clips right here. Only the ones that are between uh, bar 89 and bar 113. I'm gonna press control C to copy them. And I'm gonna come up here to the arrangement menu right here and select either from clone, rename, or add one. I'm gonna select add one and I'm gonna call this new arrangement. Now check this out. Inside FL Studio. We can have multiple arrangements inside of the one FLP, remember? So we can test out different versions of that song to see what we like. Maybe make a radio edit, maybe make a club edit of a track. But it's all um, uh, accessible really quickly. I can just go back and forth between multiple arrangements. So let's go to that new arrangement. And what I'm going to do is essentially drag this drop to bar 33 like a typical EDM drop. And then what I'm going to grab is that drop. I'll press Control C. Control C. Come back over here and paste it. And then I'm going to copy certain parts of this guy, such as that snare, anything up here except i'm not going to copy those mix uh, automations i'll explain why in a second so now we have uh, the drop over here all right so we know for this part which is going to be the intro so let's uh, give it a tag uh, as an intro so i'm gonna press Control t to create a marker for it and i can right click on that little auto thing that popped up and I can rename it by pressing R, call it intro. And boom, this is going to be your intro. Right here we can have a T and call it pre-build, rename it, pre-build. And then we can have this part right here, press T and call this the build. And come up to the drop. Press Control T again, and rename this to the drop. All right, so that's what we got right here. So we know that this sounds exactly the same as a drop right now, right? So let's go ahead and get rid of some of these guys. So first of all, let's get rid of uh, the bass because I don't want the bass right here. So I'm gonna select the the delete tool up here. Notice how all my editors are up here on my left hand corner. So this is one of the cool things about FL Studio that they're always there. So no matter what, if you forget your shortcuts, they're always going to be there for you. Not only that, but they sh do show you the shortcut name inside of the this little window right here. So if I hover over the brush tool or the paint tool, you have a B. If I go over the mute tool, you have a T. Slip tool, you have an S. Slice, you have a C. Select, you have an E. Zoom, you have a Z. And playback, you have a Y. And I'll go over them in a second. And then draw tool is a P. So let's delete uh, Toxic right here. Now, let me show you the cool little trick. If I'm on the Paint tool or the Brush tool, I can right-click and hold, and that will activate my Delete uh, shortcut. So I can right-click and hold to delete, 
and I'm back at painting. So I can paint something else. Let's grab that Sakura and we can paint it in there. Super easy. If I press B, I can just brush it in there as well. So it's it's really easy to go back and forth between uh, different uh, shortcuts. So right click to delete and then left click to hold to brush. Really, really simple. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you guys is this uh, mute. So let's go up. Let's just verify that that toxic is not playing. So yeah, we have no bass. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to mute the SARS, which are the main leads. And also want to mute the the chords and the little plucks right here. So let's, let's mute all of them and make sure by playing back that they're all muted. All right, perfect. Now this is starting to sound more like an intro. I can also uh, use a slip tool. So for example, um, if I come up to the snare and it, I I cut this cut this this right here. Uh, the cut tool is the C tool, right? So I can just press C and cut. So I'm gonna cut this guy, and I'm gonna come to my quantization tool and make this one fourth of a beat, just so I can edit a little bit closer. I'm gonna keep on zooming in by pressing Control, right click and drag to zoom in. I can press C again to cut things up. Now check this out. I can press S to select the slip tool and I can slip some of the, those, these patterns around. So, and I can change the way the rhythm is. So this is almost like editing audio but we're actually editing MIDI. It's really, really cool what you can do with uh, inside of the playlist in FL Studio. And again, let me remind you that these are just clips at the end of the day. So this is a pattern clip. Then up down over here we have a uh, a audio clip, which is a crash, which is a crash. And then we also have uh, automation clips down here. But they're all sending back to the channel rack inside FL Studio and triggering what the the actual instrument in the channel rack. All right. So we have this down. Now the last couple of uh, editors down here we have is the select tool. I typically don't press the select tool because as I mentioned, it's really easy to swap between um, tools inside of a studio. So if I'm ever using the paint tool or the brush tool, I can just simply press control, right click and drag to make a selection. I can make a very wide selection or I can make the smallest of selections. It's very easy to do. I don't necessarily have to be uh, hitting those shortcuts. Now, the other cool thing, uh, which is why I also don't use that shortcut a lot, um, and I pref tend to prefer uh, using control and uh, right clicking and dragging, is because I can press control, right click and drag, and then I can press shift, and I can paste that selection over somewhere else, and I can be very exact with, uh, with uh, where it's going. So, for example, right here, we can say we put it halfway through bar uh, 49, or I can put it quarter way through bar 49. We can be very precise. We don't necessarily have to uh, press Control C and then press press uh, Control V somewhere else. You know, I can just just simply drag and drop basically everything around here. All right, and then the way I undid all that was by pressing Control Alt and Z multiple times. And the last little tools we have is the playback. This is a really cool tool, actually. Uh, very underrated. I don't actually see many people using it. But for example, let's say I wanted to hear something in my playlist and mute everything else quickly. I can press Y and check out how that one exact clip sounds. Let's go to that snare. Let's go to the FPC groove. I'm going to go over here to the KVO uh, lead or check out how the chords sound. Wherever my cursor is hovering, I can just check out how it sounds like. So it's a very cool tool. People should use it more often, in my opinion. All right, so as far as we go right now, we understand the, the cutting tools, the delete tools, or basically all the arrangement tools, we understand them now. And we also did uh, markers. So let's swap some of these parts around in the track. So what, what if we had a, let's say, the intro, what if we had it as an outro? I can right click on the on the intro and move my content right. Again, 
move my content right, right click on the intro, move content right, and now I have my drop and then my intro. So we can actually see if our intro would also be a good outro. So let's take a listen to it. So then we notice, okay, the change is a little bit too abrupt. So let's add a little bit more of a, a little bit more instrumentation. So we can add, let's say the, the, some of these uh, plucks again. And you're like, okay, maybe that's a good way to go. But what if I can change the, the way the filter is on that? super easy i can go to my automation bring it down significantly notice how this changes other automation clips because again they are clips they're not uh, uh automation links i can so the way to unlink them from each other is by right clicking on the clip and selecting make unique now whatever i do on this clip will not affect the other clip so let's bring down the filter And it's still a bit too dramatic, so let's make sure we bring it all the way down. Oh, that's the cutoff envelope. <laughs> all right, this is the cutoff frequency over here. So I'm gonna make this unique again, and or make this also unique, and then there you go. Let's play it back from two bars out. All right, so we can see that we're starting to get there with an outro and it's super, super simple to rearrange things, uh, see how they sound like inside of a studio. Uh, and then again, I can always go back to the other arrangement I had and say, hmm, does this really sound better than the other outro I had? So it's, so let's play this back. So we can see that this intro or outro has a different taste. I still have the bass in there, but I remove the the leads on top. Whereas the other one we did, we still have leads on top. And I personally think that this outro is a little bit better, of course, because I spent more time on it. But um, yeah, there we go. This is a, a really quick way to rearrange tracks inside of a studio. I uh, also mentioned that we we're going to learn a little bit about uh, rendering re replacing uh, clips. Uh, because sometimes we do want to edit things further in audio. Super easy to edit clips. Uh, I can just select the clip that I want to edit, come up to the FPC right here in the on my pattern picker, right click on it, and select render and replace. So I can rem render and replace the whole pattern with, uh, with audio. Uh, I can select enable insert effects or enable master effects. Of course, I don't want the master effects. Uh, but I do want the insert effect, so I'm going to press start. And bam, all those FPCs number twos patterns are, have been replaced. Really cool. Now let's say I didn't like that, I can just press Alt, Control C. And I'm back to the actual MIDI. All right. This covers quite a bit. There's one last thing that we're missing though. Um, that's automations. How do you create automations? Now, most DAWs, uh, you you just create an automation lane under your pattern or under under MIDI or under your audio track. It's really hard linked to that specific uh, uh, MIDI or audio track or group track, whatever it is. But in FL Studio, that is not the gate, uh, gate. That is not the case. Um, you can even, uh, link these automation clips to multiple parameters. So let's take a look at the the cutoff filter we had over here earlier. Now let's say we we also want to edit something else inside of the, the cutoff. Let's say we want to edit the resonance inside of the cutoff. Uh, I'm going to create a new track by pressing by right clicking, pressing I to create a new track. And now what I want to do is come to that 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 pluck 
make sure it's pasted over so we can still listen to it. And I'm going to go into that synthesizer, turn it on and go to the filter and select the filter resonance, right click on it and select create automation clip and bam, we have an automation clip for that filter. Of course, it's not green. I have to color that in myself, but this is enough to get started with this example. So I'm going to pump up that resonance. Just to make sure that it's working, I'm going to look at the at the citrus, and you'll see here that the resonance as I move down changes. And I'm also going to push up the cutoff filter a little bit. And we can even hear we can hear how nasally the lead becomes. Now, the reason the clips, the automation is so unique inside of Studio is because you can link it to multiple things. Now, let's say I wanted to add distortion to that lead. I'm going to lower it down the mix. Uh, and I wanted to automate the mix on that. I can right click to automate the mix and then link it to controller. Because our automation clips are actually controllers, I can go into turn a controller and select KVO filter resonance. I'm going to accept this and check this out. Both. Things are moving together. I'm gonna make this a little bit more dramatic. So both the filter resonance and the mix are gonna be working together. Really cool. So that's pretty much it for the playlist. And if you guys have any questions, leave us questions in the in the comments section. Of course, uh, let, let's read cover everything uh, we did. We learned how to edit inside of Studio this playlist. We went over all the editor's clips. We learned how to zoom, how to cut, how to delete, how to copy paste, how to mute, how to render things, clips to audio. We learned how to arrange tracks and we learned how to rearrange tracks and add new arrangements to create new versions of that one track. I want to thank you guys for being here with us in music marketing. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give us a like. And if you want to see more educational content like this on audio production and music production, make sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. I'm Kevin Ochoa with Music Marketing TV, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.